In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear air springs on this Mercury Grand Marquis between the year ranges of 2003 and 2011. The air spring will be located directly on top of your rear differential between that and the frame of the vehicle. Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. The first thing that I want to mention is we are going to have to start lifting up the rear of the vehicle by the frame. So the rear suspension will be hanging down, taking pressure off of it. Now, once you're in an area that you can do that, the next thing that you want to think about is there can be no air pressure inside the air suspension system. Commonly, if you're replacing this part, it's due to the fact that there isn't any pressure inside here. If your vehicle's hanging down like this, generally you should be all set. Otherwise, it's a good idea to make sure you vent out that air. You can do that using a scanner of some sort. Not everybody has one of these. So what we'll do is make our way under the hood and show you a different way with a power probe. Let's make our way over and connect that power probe and then go over to the air filter housing. Over in this area, let's continue on with a small pocket screwdriver. We're going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. You need the pocket screwdriver because there's a small red locking tab underneath this area that you have to dislodge. I'll make my way right under here, get onto that tab and gently pull it away. Once you have that dislodged, go ahead and use your index finger along the bottom to squeeze the locking tab and gently pull this off. There's the tab right there. After you have it disconnected, just give it a quick check for corrosion. Assuming it looks good, you can set that aside. Now we can start removing the air inlet from the top of the air filter housing. For this, you can use a flathead screwdriver or an eight millimeter socket. Loosen that clamp. We'll give this a little wiggle to break it free. The next thing that we'll start doing is removing our three 11 millimeter headed mounting nuts that hold the air filter housing down to the body of the vehicle. You'll find that you have two of them along the back side of the housing. One along the front. Remove all three. This one's broken on ours. Now we can grab onto this. We're going to start lifting it up at an angle from the rear upwards and pull it towards the rear of the vehicle. Along the front, there is an area that needs to slide out. Set that aside. With that out of the way, it exposes our air ride suspension compressor and the electrical connector. On this electrical connector, there should be two locking tabs, one along this area and one on the opposite side. On ours, as you can tell, they're broken, but typically you can just use a small pocket screwdriver, gently get in between, pry it off, and then separate this area. A quick check for corrosion. And now we can set the wiring aside and we'll hold on to the wiring that goes to the compressor itself. Looking at this electrical connector, you can see that it has four wires. There's only two wires that we want to pay attention to at this moment the green wire, and the blue wire. What we need to do is look at the inside of the connector here. You're going to find the two tabs that align with each of those wires. Let's take our power probe, and we're going to use the ground wire and go into the prong with the green wire here. Just line that up, slide it right into place. With that in there, in the ground position, we'll continue on with the power probe and power up that blue wire. When you do, you should hear some noise coming from the vent valve. Now, once you've depleted all the pressure from inside the system, we'll continue on by putting all of this back together. Reconnect your electrical connector and make sure that's secure. Those two locking tabs should fit right in there. Reinstall that air filter housing. There we are. Continue on to remounting all three of your 11 millimeter mounting nuts. The forward one on ours is broken. 
we'll snug these up. Tighten the clamp between your air inlet tube and the upper air filter housing. It's important to make sure this is nice and tight so no dirty or unmetered air makes its way into the engine. Continue on to the mass airflow sensor. For the mass airflow sensor, we'll make sure that we have the locking tab facing down. Once we press this all the way in, it's important to make sure that you press that red locking tab towards the mass airflow sensor. Make sure it's secured. Got a little click there. Lock it in, give it a wiggle. Let's remove our power probe from this area. Continue on to making your way to the trunk. We'll switch off that air suspension. Continue on to safely raising the vehicle by using the frame with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, we're going to continue on by looking up above the tire, above the frame, and you'll find the area where the air shock goes into. Now we'll use some needle nose pliers. Looking up along the top area of the frame, you can see this little nub. That's the top area of the air shock. There's a metal locking clip that holds this in place. We'll use the long nose pliers to try to grab that clip and slide it out of position. This part can be a little bit difficult. There we are. You want to make sure you give this a good inspection. Make sure it is still reusable. Set it aside. Now we'll continue on from underneath the vehicle. We're going to be looking for the wiring harness that leads to the airbag. On this, you're going to find that you have two locking tabs, one on the forward aspect of this connector and one towards the rear. You want to gently try to separate those just a little bit. And once you've done that, you should be able to pull the electrical connector off of the area. Once it's off, just give it a quick check for corrosion. There's that, quick check for corrosion, set it aside. Now it's time to continue on to the air connector. For this, you'll find that you have a metallic tab just along the top of it. Use a small screwdriver or a pick and gently pry this out of position, unlocking it. All right, now that we have that clip off of there, you can just give it a quick inspection and set it aside. We have a brand new one. Before you continue pulling out that airline, it's going to be easiest to take that out of position if you use a pry bar and carefully get in between the air shock and the differential. I just want to try to press my way in and then I'll gently pry this out of position. Now I'll grab onto this and I'm gonna start bringing it down and out diagonally, keeping in mind that the airline is still attached along the top. With this down, we have clear access to removing the airline from this. Now what we need to pay attention to is this tan slash white area right here. We're going to have to grab onto this with some pliers and gently twist it counterclockwise. While we're doing this, we're going to pay attention inside of this area. There's a little locking tab that has to make its way counterclockwise this way, up a little bit, over again, and then completely up and out. That's how this airline is locked into place. There we are. I've got it so the first area is lined up. I'll continue on by lifting this up and out and then continue twisting it until it's fully out of position. Once you have the airline out of there, it's a good idea to give this a quick inspection. Remove your airbag. There it is, friends. Now with that out of there, let's continue on up along the top of the differential. It's important to make sure that you remove this little tin piece right here. Sometimes it'll still be stuck to the air shock, other times it'll be stuck inside of the differential. Either way, the new air shock comes with one. Continue on to removing each of your two O-rings. We'll compare it to the brand new ones and replace them. For this, you can use a small pocket screwdriver or a small pick, whatever works best for you. There's one.
Now, before we put in each of these new O-rings, pay attention in this area. You'll find that you have a small plastic ring that is supposed to go in between each of these two O-rings. It's important to make sure that it's situated properly. Let's take these O-rings and carefully slide them into place. Double check to make sure that that plastic area is in between the two O-rings. Okay friends, let's get ready to install our brand new air shock. We'll take our connector and put it in position, making sure that we have each of these tabs lined up accordingly. As we start sliding it in, you'll notice that you have to turn it clockwise while you continue pushing it into the shock, and then one more time clockwise to lock it into the fully locked position. Now we can install our brand new clip along the top. You'll notice that it has two ears. Each one of those ears needs to fit into this area. That's what locks it in position. Double check along both sides. Give the connector a quick wiggle to make sure it's completely secured. Now we can take this and put it up inside the frame. Once you have it up there, it's a good idea to put something underneath this area to hold it up while you put in your top locking clip. As far as this clip, it doesn't matter if it goes in from the front to the back or the back to the front, as long as it's making its way in there and it holds the shock in place. There we are. Once you have the other side air shock in position, we'll continue on with raising the differential. Make sure you align each of these. Start bringing this up. Now once you have a little bit of pressure on this, we're going to want to continue on by grabbing onto it and pulling it down against the differential itself. Listen for it to click in. Do the same on the other side. Now we can release the pressure from underneath our rear differential and make our way out from underneath the vehicle. As we start bringing the vehicle down, it's important to make sure that you don't bring the vehicle down all the way to the ground. As you do so, you're going to over compress the air shock inside this area. So all you want to do is carefully bring the vehicle down so the body sits in the approximate position that it would be in if you were driving down the road. That looks good. Make your way back into the trunk, turn on the air suspension, close your trunk lid. Now we can put the key in the on position and turn on the air compressor. Okay friends, we fully installed our air shocks. At this point, go ahead and take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.